youtube.com forward slash Lord. Subscribe to the channel for gaming news, updates, discussion, and live streams. Signing off. Hey guys, it's Moogalore here and I'm back again with another video. This video is going to be quite different. Um, it's going to be a bit more personal and I feel as though that I need to share this with you guys so you guys know what's going on. Um, I always try to be upfront on my channel when it comes to to me and you guys. I try to keep the relationship very, very close and stuff because I appreciate you guys. You guys have always been there um, for me since I started this YouTube YouTube career, you know, or just this this hobby is this is really, 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 really fun. You guys really mean a lot to me. So I feel as though that I need to share this with you guys. Now, you can see in the description or the title of the video or the thumbnail that your boy Mugen Lord has been going through a lot of uh, stress um, lately. And I can say it can go as far as back as for the past couple of years. Now, the thing is, uh, mental health and just uh, physical health in general is very, very important. Now, I know that a lot of YouTubers have talked about this um on on their youtube channel and you know we had a a great youtuber who who you know passed away uh, not too long ago you know who that is that's etica and everything and mental health and a lot of these um health issues when it comes to you know your mental stability and everything is really really serious and stuff like that so um your boy moving lawyer has been going through a lot um physically and also up here um uh, mentally now, to get right into it, if you guys have been uh, noticing what I've been posting on my community um, page uh, back about a month ago, I was talking about I had a lot of things um, in store for you guys um, for the channel, and there are still things to come, um, but things have been postponed because of what I've been going through in my um, personal life. Now, not too long around after E3 of 2019, if you notice that there has been a long gap between... Um, times that I was uploading my videos um, and everything matter of fact I probably haven't even uploaded in like a week or so or whatever and if I did it was it was also it was more so a movie mix more so like filler content on the channel and everything and that was because um, back um, early in July uh, for some strange reason um, I was you know doing my daily activities I, I wouldn't say even back in July it was happening on and off around like early of this year 2019 i was noticing that my body's had been feeling really really weird and everything um i would get sudden fatigue um i would get headaches and everything and sometimes my vision would get a little uh screwy uh, like messed up on me sometimes like blurry and stuff um i was start uh experiencing uh numbness and you know in my right leg every once in a while and every time i used to get these experiences and everything I would say to myself, um, like Mugen Lord or Brian, uh, you need to relax. Uh, maybe you should lay down and, you know, hopefully this headache will go away and these, this pain will go away and everything. So I would take some night NyQuil, lay down, and I'll be going for the whole day. Um, you guys, if you guys also have been um, following me on my live streams, there's a few times where I said I had a, like a a splitting headache or a migraine that was just coming out of nowhere and I had to cut the stream real short and everything and I know it was a few of you guys who witnessed that where I had to end the stream because out of nowhere this headache came out of nowhere so this has been happening on and off throughout the beginning of this year all the way up into July 25th so I decided to go to the emergency because my breathing and everything it, 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 was, get, it was getting ridiculous and stuff and it was scaring me so um, I went to the emergency and everything and they went to go check me out and stuff and I found out that I have high I had high blood pressure I mean extremely high and the symptoms that that I was experiencing I was experiencing symptoms of a stroke but I was I was having them they were just going they was coming they were going they were coming they were going and everything like that and it really really it really really scared me and it also scared the the doctor so they wouldn't even let me leave the emergency until my they they calm me down make sure my blood pressure try to get it down to a you know low or to a certain point where I, they was able to let me go but they told me i had to see a doctor right away because this has to be checked um so i was really scared I, I was really really scared so i end up the next day i end up seeing my doctor and they had to do a lot of blood work on me and and everything 
um, to, to find out what's going on. Now, not only that, I also found out that um, this whole blood pressure issue is also hereditary. I, um, my mom has it. It's on my mom's side of the family and everything. So, you know, lucky me, I end up it end up coming pat being passed down to me. So I was I was really really scared, and the doctors were telling me that this this has to be addressed, and they end up putting me on some medication. And I the just the the fact is that me thinking about me being on medication really started stressing me out because I'm too young for this. I'm like 32 years old, and now I have to take medication and everything um, in order to have my blood pressure low. And he also told me that I had to, uh, change my diet and everything as well. Now, the thing is, I'm not really an eater. I don't really eat much. I maybe eat once or twice out of the whole day, but the issue was it was what I was eating. And the, and the reason why my blood pressure had skyrocketed the way it did was because of, you know, sodium and so much sodium, um, in me. And it was just, it was just ridiculous. It was so high. And they told me I had to cut back on what I was eating and the sodium and my sodium intake. And the issue is, it's very, very important to take care of your body. Your health is very, very important. And I never realized how important um, that was up until now. Um, the last time I've been to the hospital was 2017. So they had my only only thing they had to work off was off of before the new information and from the blood work came in they only had to work off the information they had from 2017 that's the last time i ever been to the hospital to get checked out and everything and that was stupid on my part and i think the main reason why i never ever went back to is because i was a i was afraid to hear stuff like this and that's what kept me away from the hospital um and, and stopped me from getting my checkups because i was just afraid to hear stuff like this and i ended up getting worse and my high i had high blood pressure then um, back in 2017 also from those records in 2017 they said i was pre-diabetic and everything but later on after the the, the more recent um, blood work came in i ended up fighting off the the you know the pre-diabetic um status that i had on me so i'm, I'm clear out of the blue with that but there was an issue like i said when it came to my blood pressure and everything from the time of 2017 up into 2019 man i was just i've been completely eating unhealthy yeah, I, yeah, I go to the gym, but the issue was it doesn't make a difference if I go to the gym just to come home and just eat some French fries, eat a cheeseburger and stuff like that. And like I said, I only eat once or twice a day, but it's it's the amount that I eat, you know, in that day and what I'm eating. And what made it worse was I used to order every day from 2017 up to now. I ordered every day for either lunch or dinner. And the main thing I love the most is the Boston market. I love the Boston market, man. But the Boston market is very, very high in calories, like 1,800 calories. And then what made it worse was I would pour salt on top of what's already salted already. And I did that with most of my foods, even with McDonald's fries. I would put more salt on McDonald's fries and stuff like that. So what happened was when I went into the hospital to get checked out, I was 170 pounds. And on top of me lifting weights and everything, it made me even heavier and everything. So, um, they told me that Mr. Blackson, uh, you will have, you have to change your eating habits. You have to change your diet and you have to lay off the sodium. So they put me on the dash diet and the dash diet is pretty much me. Uh, it's only certain foods that I can eat. Um, and also my sodium intake has to be 1500, um, uh, milligrams, um, a day. If, that, if you're on a dash diet and everything. So I had to watch what I eat. I also had to get this weight off and everything. So I end up, I end up doing that. Um, I went out, I started going for walks, but before, even before that, I was really, really scared because my doctor told me that, um, because of my youth and because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. I don't do none of those things. And that's the only reason why I'm, I'm still standing. Because if I did any of those things on top of what my body was going through, I'll be dead right now. I'll be complete. I'll be dead. And you'll be probably seeing RIP on my YouTube channel because that's how bad my health was. That's how seriously my, how bad my health was. And that's how bad, that's how high my blood pressure was. And I don't even want to talk about it. That's how much it scared me and, and, and everything. And it really, really had me start thinking about my life in a whole totally different way. And I spent my whole life thinking about others and getting other parts of my life in order 
but I, I oftentimes neglect myself. I neglect my mind, I neglect my body and everything. And before I get to the whole mental thing, um, yeah, so doctor, uh, my doctor, Dr. Tanaka, um, she had uh, got me a prescription to get uh, these two pills right here. Um, hydro uh, chlorothiazide, uh, thiazide, 25 milligrams right here. And uh, amlo, uh, uh, do dopamine, whatever it's called. I can't even pronounce it. That was 10 milligrams or whatever like that. So I have to take these two pills, these two. I take them once a day. And um, with the the first pill, the 10 milligrams, I have to take right here. Um, this right here, uh, that's for my blood pressure to keep everything leveled and everything. Um, and then I have to take the, the hydro um, pills. Now, what this does is when I take this, um, it fleshes out my system, which means I, it's gonna it makes me pee a lot it, so I can get all the sodium out of my system and everything. So every day... I'm constantly peeing on top of me, drinking water and everything like that. And I it just imagine me just taking medication. Now, I don't have to. I'm not going to be on this for the rest of my life if I do what I'm supposed to do and be responsible with my health and everything. And I don't have to take this for the rest of my life. Um, but this is just to get my, you know, my blood level down and everything. And also then my doctor uh, sent me to see a nutritionist. I want to go see I want to go see her. And, uh, oh man, <laughs> she lost her mind when I told her, how, uh, what I was eating and everything and how unhealthy I was. And she put me, she pretty much put me on fast food, um, punishment. So I can, I can't even eat fast food right now. I can't eat, I can't even look at a cheeseburger. I can't look at pizza, fried chicken wings and stuff like that. So I was like, uh, so she, she put me on the dash diet. She, um, I'm not allowed to lift any weights yet until my blood pressure is, fully you know under control and everything um so i can't really lift any high intensity weight or whatever right now they want me to stick to cardio and just you know walk in jogging and everything like that to get the blood get get my blood pumping and everything and everything and all that sorts of, um of stuff and then uh, when i come when i come back for another checkup then if my blood levels is at where they want me to be at um then they'll give me permission to go back and i can start doing some light lift weight um on lift um weight lifting and everything excuse me so right after that um i went home i went home started thinking about a lot of things in my life and it was it, it really scared me because i was saying to myself yo, yo like i was experiencing these symptoms the whole time and didn't know and i was like it, anytime i could have went to sleep anytime and never woke up you know and it really made me think about a lot of things and i was like yo like i'm too young for this i'm too young to die i'm too young to experience stuff like this i have a daughter and everything now i can't leave my daughter this early you know i'm a single dad so it's just me raising my daughter and everything and i can't leave her you know I, I like i need to be here for her and everything so that really 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 bothered me so i was so scared you know of this whole thing to the point where i didn't eat any meat for two weeks for two weeks straight all i had was water apple slices <laughs> I had solid without any dressing. I just had like organic mustard just sprinkled in there and mixed and stuff like that. And all I had was an egg solid sandwich, like an egg sandwich. That's all I had for two weeks straight. And it was killing me. It was killing me. But I was saying to myself, this has to be done because I don't want to die, you know? So, you know, it was kind of hard eating and then watching other people beside me order out or, you know, eat these eat cheesesteaks and stuff like that or are we all having a good time gaming and stuff like that and everybody you know ordering their wings and stuff like that and i couldn't eat none of that you know it really really bothered it was really really getting to me because i had to stick to the egg salad but i knew it was good for me and this is what i needed to do so i had to go back for another checkup and everything so i went back for a checkup for my second checkup so to get to check out my blood work and everything and like i said i beat the i beat the pre-diabetic -di situation i beat that um everything else was sort of coming up um pretty good nothing nothing else is wrong with me but it was the blood pressure so they were saying to me that it's going to take a minute dr tanaka said look rome wasn't built overnight so you want to keep working at it keep doing what you're doing so they went to go weigh me i went from 170 <laughs> to 166 just like that within two within two weeks i went to 170 to 170 to 176 and she was amazed how i just dropped i dropped that weight and everything and 
my nutritionist was amazed. It's like, like, what did you do? I said, hey, I said the issue was I ordered, I ordered out too much. All I did was not order anymore. I stopped ordering food, and I just stuck to me, uh, stuck to the sand, the egg sandwiches and solid and water, no juice, just water, and that dropped me down to that much from 170 to uh, 166. So right after that, they went to check my blood pressure again. It was a lot lower than it was before. It was still high. It wasn't skyrocket high, but they it was still in the, it was still it was like 140. Now it's like 140 over over 100 or whatever. And he said and because before then it was like the bottom the bottom number was at like 112, 115, 120 and and stuff like that. But now I got down to 100 and everything cuz I started doing the walking, like I was like I'm and I'm eating differently and everything like that. So they were saying that Mr. Blackson, we still gotta get these numbers down, but uh, we do see progress. So we have, we just, just we won't be grateful for, for this because it was much higher than this. But we, we know you can get it down. But they were saying that we, as doctors, what they do is they always give you the worst news. They, you know, they always give you the worst of the worst news. And they were saying that if we can't get it down, then we're gonna definitely check your kidneys to make sure there's nothing wrong with your kidneys and everything. Man, that oh my god, that starts stressing me out and stuff. But. That's when my doctor asked me personally, um, Dr. Ta Tanaka asked me personally, and she said to me, like, Mr. Blackson, are you, are you stressing? Like, are you going through anything, um, in your, in your life that you haven't resolved or you have any issues and stuff and everything? So that's when I thought about it for a second. And I said to myself, wow, I, yeah, I do. I have a lot of issues. So she said, that's also, that's also the cause of your blood pressure too you have a, you have a lot of stress and i can see it on your face that you stress that you're stressed and everything and she was like listen you're not gonna leave here until we have have you scheduled to see our psychiatrist and stuff so yes um Mugen Lore is now seeing a psychiatrist to see what's going on up here uh, and everything but i can already tell you what's going on up here and stuff like that so i think a lot of things besides my bad um choices when it comes to to what i eat and put into my body a big majority of my stress comes from up here um i have i have a lot of stress um i've been i've been depressed i've been depressed i've been stressed in everything for the past uh, couple years it haven't it, this stress and this depression haven't just came out of nowhere out of the blue having started in july or anything like that it started way back then um <laughs> it started back way back in like 2006 2007 it all it all became a build-up it was a build-up over time and i want to go see my site see a psychiatrist and everything and the issue is with me i thought i was handling uh handling my issues like up in my head um uh, your boy Mugen lord man um, I have a lot of anger issues, a whole lot of anger issues. Um, my anger issues definitely, you know, um, stems, uh, stems from, um, my pet, my relationship with my, uh, with my baby mom. Um, I made a lot of bad choices in my life when it came to, um, the women that I, that, that I decided to bring into my life. Um, also the death of my grandmother. It was, it was a whole lot of things. And as I started progressing in my life um, throughout those years, um, if you've been following me since 2006, uh, when I started the YouTube channel, my, my YouTube channel was booming. I mean, I was getting like 3,000 views a day, 4,000 views. No matter vi what video I dropped, I was like big. I could have been one of those big YouTubers back in the day. But ever since I encountered um, my ex, uh, my baby mom, um, Hera at the time, um, a lot of the, my life just, just went whole, just turned upside down, um, dealing with her. Um, and I went on a complete hiatus from YouTube. I disappeared for a while. A lot of you guys who've been following me for so long, you know, I was going for like two, like around like two or three years. Um, and so much has happened while I was going. A lot of you guys thought that, you know, a moving Lord's in college and started doing those things and stuff. But, um, uh, my stress didn't kick in until I met her. And the thing is, I'm not going to blame everything on her is because I put, I learned how to take self-responsibility because there's a lot of things that I put myself through being with her and everything. 
that I didn't really have to go through. All I had to do is just just walk away from everything. But I chose to stay in a toxic relationship. And uh, that toxic relationship had really uh, brought my pressure up really, really high throughout the year. So it was all... It was all a build up throughout um, throughout the years. Your your boy Mugen Lord was just um, going through so much things. So current times, what I did was with my with my stress and what and what's up here, I started learning how to just not deal with it. And I and the issue was I started just throwing all my problems, all my stress back into my subconscious. So to to everybody else, I look completely fine, but back in the back of my mind. I'm going through, I'm battling all kinds of demons, um, in my head. And like I said, I had serious a anger issues. And those of you who don't, um, who, those of you who know me personally, who've been around me and stuff like that, y'all know the moves that I go through at times and stuff like that. And I started knowing myself very well. And people who knows me personally knows me very well that when I go, when I start going through those, those issues and everything like that, I isolate myself from everybody because I don't want to lash out on anybody, especially people who don't deserve that people who, especially those people who are there for me. I don't ever want to lash out on anyone. So I say to myself, uh, you know what, Bri like Brian, just stay away. And what I do is I isolate myself for a little bit and it's never that long. Give me a few minutes, sometimes an hour. And then once I calm myself down, I put myself back out there again and I'm completely fine. And, and that was the thing. If you ever see, uh, like my my anger is so bad to the point I can just snap in and out of myself. If you ever watched Batman the animated series, the episode of Harvey Dent, um, be before he became Two Face and Bruce Wayne and them used to hang out, and Harvey Dent would be calm one minute and then he would lash out, and then after he lash out, he turn around and everybody look at him like he's crazy, and then he calms down he goes back to himself, and that's that's how that's what I was going through. I'd be cl completely fine one minute and then I'd just be angry. The next minute, and then like I snap, and then I snap back into myself, and that was really, really bad. And what also added on to that was after, you know, I've been through a lot with my baby mom, and we broke up. She left me. She left our child. So I ended up raising my child and everything. I dropped out of college at that time, and everything. So it was like my life was just just falling apart, and also dealing with her put me in, in a lot of tough, tough situations and it put me in a situation to where it ended up getting my father involved and my dad ended up getting shot protecting me it was a, it was just a whole complete mess so I witnessed my dad um getting shot in front of my face and I ended up getting shot at all because of the drama that my baby mom had had started and stuff and all I had to do was just say get walk away from this toxic relationship and because I didn't it involved a lot of my family members and it it caused my dad to get hurt and my dad's still alive and it's a it's a blessing you know and my dad's fine now and he, he's very he's really really fine now and everything but um that still traumatized me you know I still think about that it's still I still see that in my in in, in my head my dad getting shot in front of me and I felt completely helpless. You know, all I could do is just shield my dad's body and everything so he wouldn't get shot again. And then I end up getting shot at and stuff like that. And it, it that traumatizes me. And then, as I said before, you know, my baby mom leaving and stuff like that. And then it was just left with me, you know, raising my daughter and everything and stuff. And, you know, I felt like I had both my mother and father in my life you know, my whole life. And then I couldn't even keep my family together, you know? And I used to blame myself for that throughout the years that, you know, I had my mom and dad, but my daughter don't have her mom and her dad and everything. And I felt like a failure as a man. Like I failed to keep my family together and I was beating myself up. But as time started progressing and everything, I started realizing that, Hey, like I can't put all the blame on me. It's because I try to make our relationship work, you know, I try to get, I, I try, like I worked, I tried out of college. I worked two to three jobs, you know, I was pretty much burning myself out to make sure that my woman and make sure that my daughter had the things that they needed and everything. But a relationship doesn't work if the other person is not trying to work things out, you know? 
So I started trying to cope with that and everything. But then I was blessed with the opportunity to go back to college. And that was the best decision ever in my life, thanks to my parents. And my parents allowed, you know, said, you know, moving Lord, no, Brian, <laughs> go back to school. Don't worry about your daughter. We we have her. You know, she's she's she knows who her father is. Go back to school. So I had to finish the last two two years of school and 2015, there was 14, 14 or 15. I graduated from school, got my bachelor's degree in um, business administration and everything. And um, that's when I came home and discovered that my grandmother had passed away. And that's something that still bothers me. Um, and it bothers me for the fact is that I never had a chance to see her uh, physically. Because like my grandmother, you don't understand about my grandmother. I call her the Oracle. Uh, if you ever watched the matrix with Neo, when he talks to the or Oracle, my, my grandma was a very spiritual, um, woman. She was actually an evangelist. She used to preach at different churches and stuff. She always used to work at the, you know, the, you know, salvation army. And she used to help homeless people. She used to do everything. Like my grandmother was, uh, freaking incredible, man. I love my grandmother and whatever I went through, I used to see my grandmother and grandfather, but it was more so my grandmother. And we used to sit in the kitchen, just like how Neil talked to the to the Oracle. I always to go, we always sit in the kitchen. She would cook something, and she always used to talk to me. And what my grandmother always said to me, she always called me the Million Dollar Man, cause she just had this thing where she she didn't even have to know you. She can she knew she was like I would I would I would even see like say like she's like a fortune teller or I wouldn't say fortune teller. But like she could see through you. She could see your life. She could see everything that you've been through and tell you everything that you're going to do before you do it and how your life is going to turn out and everything. She just had this premonition about her. She was a very incredible woman and everything, anything that I went through, man, like it's like, she was always there. I was always able to talk to her and she always called me the million dollar man. She was saying, she always said to me that I was going to be the one that was going to break the curse that my family always had, that our family had our family. Traditionally, our family, man, we, we were very smart, but we always, our demise was we, we was too smart for ourselves. And a lot of us end up either on, our family members either end up on drugs, jail, dead. Or some of us end up almost reaching that point of becoming someone important. You know, to leave it a dent in society and life in general. But because our own, you know, our own ego, we end up destroying ourselves. But... My grandma always said that I was the one that was going to change things, change it all and everything. She said I was going, she said one day I was going to be a, I'm going to be a millionaire. She said, she always said I was going to be that million dollar man. She said, I was going to be, I was going to be this man that's going to change a lot of things. And I never seen my grandmother wrong about anything. And she said, I always said I had potential and everything. And that's why I, I just loved about my grandmother. Like any, anything that I need from her, she was just always there. And the fact is that she passed away and I, I didn't get just to lay eyes on her. Yeah. Like my grandmother, she, she was just everything to me. And I regret it's because, um, it was that it was one day I was coming home. Uh, this is my senior year. I'm about to graduate pretty soon. So, um, my grandmother's definitely looking forward to my graduation. And she always just say, it's like, I'm looking forward to your gra graduation. If you know, if if the Lord spares spares my life, I'm definitely going to be there and everything. And my grandma always kept saying that. And I'm like, why does she keep saying that? But um, I definitely regret that day it was because um, I came home for spring break, which was going to be the last break before I go back to finals and then graduate and everything. And my grandmother said to me, uh, you know, hey grandson, um don't you know don't you leave <laughs> don't you don't you get back on that bus to go back to, to to you know to school and don't see your grandmother and see your grandfather and, and it was during the spring break while i was home and um i said yeah grandma trust me like i won't forget i won't forget i won't forget i won't forget and um so later on during that time i was all for that week for spring break my baby mom called me um, she was in, she was in town, she was around and she wanted to see her daughter and my dumb ass spent that whole week at that time chasing that, chasing after her. Like she came and then she seen her daughter and I was, so I was with her, I was with my daughter and everything. She came by to visit 
and stuff like that. She was giving her, you know, she wanted to give her daughter some money, give her some, you know, whatever she needed, some clothes and stuff like that. So I spent, I ended up spending that whole week messing around with her. And, um, I tried to try to see my grandmother the night before I had to get back on the bus to go back to Mansfield university so I can get, you know, finals and stuff like that. And, um, I got, I got there and my grandmother and grandfather wasn't there. So I didn't get a chance to see them. So I, I ended up missing that. So I got on the bus, went back to school and I'm, now I'm preparing. I've got finals coming up. I'm stressing and everything. But I remember my grandmother, she called, she called my phone and my grandmother never, no, normally never called my phone. She never really calls me. We always, cause we always see each other physically. So she never calls. So I found it kind of strange that she called me. And, and when she called me, I was on my way to, um, my managerial fin finance class. I was on my way there and she called me and I found it kind of strange. And she's like, Hey, she said, Hey, grandson. So how's my million, my, uh, my million dollar man doing? I was like, Oh, I'm doing fine. Grandma. And I'm, I was said to my grandma, or grandmother that I didn't want to make it. I said, I have to make this short, this conversation short is because I have to go to class. I'm running late and stuff like that. And she said, that's fine, grandson. Um, I'm just looking forward, you know, to seeing you at gra graduation and, and stuff like that. And she was really, and she was trying to have a conversation with me and stuff like that. But I was so busy and so wrapped up in trying to get the class and stuff. And I was like, I said, yes, grandma, I'll call, I'm going to call you back when I get a chance. And I never did. And during the whole finals week, I try to call my grandmother because I needed her prayer. I want, I needed her blessings and stuff like that. Because she always get me through when I'm stressing and stuff like that. She used to pray over me and stuff like that. And I then I feel like I can do anything, you know. And for some reason, my grandmother wasn't picking up the phone or whatever like that. Then my my dad, I called my dad, say, "Hey, what's up with grandma? I haven't heard from her." He said, "Well, um, your grandma was going. Your grandmother um went away. She had uh, uh she had to go. She was doing some missionary stuff, missionary work and everything. She had to preach and all this other kind of stuff. So that's why we haven't heard from grandma. So I was like, okay, not knowing that my grandmother already passed away already. But they didn't want to tell me while I was in the middle of finals because I would have just I would have just fell apart and everything. So right after I graduated and everything, came home. And I got my degree and everything. I came home and my my, my mom and dad, my dad bro bro broke the news to me that she just, she passed away. And, oh man, I was just destroyed. Uh, it, it really, it really, really bothered me. I was like, damn, like my grandmother couldn't see me graduate. I come home after graduation. I got to come home and bury her the next day. And that really messed me up. So on top of me going through the things with my baby mom, you know, and witnessing my dad getting shot and my grandmother passed away. My daughter's godmother, uh, she passed away and she died in a scuba scuba diving accident. Um so I lost I lost my I lost my best friend Stacy. She was she was like she was like my assist like an older sister. I'm the oldest in my family. I don't have an older sister. I have a younger sister, but if I had an older sister, she would be my older sister, Stacy. And I had so many things planned for me and her for the YouTube channel because she was a big gamer and everything. And she meant a lot to me, too, and everything. And uh, she passed away. So I, I, all these things I'm just taking in and I'm just putting it in the back of my mind and not addressing any of these things. And this was contributing to a lot of my anger, my depression, my stress. And what made it worse on top of that, I wasn't ready I started getting into relationships again after I graduated and stuff like that. And to find out that I'm, I wasn't really even, even well equipped or mentally or emotionally stable, um, for relationships because the different women that I met in my life, you know, after I graduate, all they did was pile on more stress to my life. All that's all they did, you know, um, this one girl and it seemed like the girls, the different girls that I met, they always had this thing where they're trying to fix me, you know, and the only thing you can do, only, only person that can fix themselves, the only person that can fix you is yourself. No one else can. And it seemed like a lot of the women that I encountered in my life or in the relationships that I were in, or even the casual, you know, friends with benefits, um, relationships that I type of, you know, relationships that I had established that I was in, these women tried to always trying to fix me. And the thing that frustrated me even more was, you tr they're trying to fix me, but they have a shit ton of issues themselves, 
you know, but you, but the moment I com I comment about their issues or whatever like that, they don't want to address their issues, but they're trying to, trying to fix mine. And there was a lot of, I was going through a lot of problems. And as I said before, um, when I said that when I go through my moods where I get angry and stuff like that, I like to be isolated. And that was the main part of when I got into these relationships is like, there's times where I just want to be left alone. And the thing is, I don't want to be left alone for a long time, but just I need my space to myself. So sometimes I just want to sit in my room and just listen to music or I turn my cell phone off and I don't want to be bothered and everything. And it seemed like the women that I encountered in my life, you know, they didn't want to respect my space at all. They 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 want to be they just they want my time 24/7. They feel like they ob like like they feel like they're entitled to my time. So the more and more they used to press on the issues and keep bothering, keep poking and keep poking at me, the the more isolated and pushed away that I get I get from them. Like I don't like now I don't want to be bothered by you. Leave me alone, you know? Leave me alone. And everybody else understand that, but the but the women that I'm I'm with they don't, they fail to realize or they fail to understand or don't want to understand or just don't care about what I, about what I want or what I, what I need at that time. They don't care. They only care about is themselves. And that was the issue that was going through and, you know, dealing with, dealing with that and then dealing with another girl who, who the whole time she always thinking that I'm talking to my baby mom or I'm going to get back with my baby mom or she's always checking my cell phone. She breaks into my cell phone to find out if I'm texting her and stuff like that. I'm like, yo, I haven't heard from her in years. They're like, like, why? Like, why are you bothering me about this and everything? So I was going, I was going through that and it, it was just, it was just stressful. It was just, it was just problems on top of problems on top of problems. And I realized that I'm not ready for any relationships at this, at this time. Like at that time, definitely I wasn't ready for relationships. And the more and more I argued and the more and more I set myself away, um, the more and more I realized like, Hey, like Brian, get out of this because these women that I encountered in my life, uh, was just raising, just raising my blood, it was boiling my blood. My pressure was going up. And every time I used to get into arguments with them, uh, my blood pressure, like my, I used to get headaches, splitting headaches and everything. So once I realized that and the last woman that I dealt with, she always played the victim card. Like she was, she's never wrong. I was always the problem, which I wasn't. And I realized that even I matured as a person as well when it came to relationships. But every time you, anybody, it wasn't just me, but other people will point out that she's wrong about something or that she has an issue about something. It's another, and she would turn back and say, it's, no, it's not this, that, and the other. It's never her fault. And she never take accountability for whatever decisions you make or things that she see out her mouth or things that she does and stuff. And that was very, very toxic because I can't stand a woman who can't, you know, acknowledge when she's wrong or can't be a woman enough to say, hey, I was wrong. You was right. Let's move on from this. You know, we can, we can work past this or whatever like that, but no. It's never her fault. She's never wrong. She's always the victim or you just don't understand her. And I realized that, hey, she's not worth it. Like she's stressing me out and she's always pointing the finger and saying that I don't understand her or she's always saying that I'm the problem when I'm completely not. Every time I'm trying to work things out, she don't want to work certain things out or when a problem is already addressed. She wants to readdress the problem. And I knew it was an issue to where we did get into an argument about a particular thing. And I thought about it and I came back to her and I was even mad enough to say, hey, you know what? You was right. And I was wrong. And she was mad at me. She was literally mad at me for me coming out saying that I'm, I was wrong and she was right. She was mad at the fact is that she couldn't argue her point to me. She wanted to argue with me. Once I seen that. I said, yo, she got issues. And I, I, I was like, you know what? She's not worth the headache. She's not even worth it. Like, look, I will give up sex and everything. I don't want to have, I don't want to sleep with her or anything. I just want to get away from her. Like my sanity, my, my health is much more important. And I chose my, my happiness, my sanity over her, you know? So that was pretty much um, what, what piled on top of that. So to conclude all this, after I seen a psychiatrist, I went back for another checkup and everything. I'm no longer 166. As of now, I'm 154 pounds. I'm a lot. I'm a lot happier. 
less stressed and I feel good. I'm eating uh, I'm, I'm eating healthy because my boy Nathan, uh, Nathaniel, he's a chef. You see him on my YouTube channel. He, com he comments. He calls himself Forrest Gardner on Super Smash Brothers and a couple other things. He's also the godfather to my daughter. So he's been showing me how to cook healthy me meals and everything. My blood pressure is lowering. Uh, right now, I got my got my lower number in my blood of my blood pressure in the eighties. My doctor said we're gonna try to fight hard to get into the, get into the seventies. So I'm I'm feeling much more energetic. I got my Fitbit workout watch. It gives me my heart sick, my you know my pulse. It tells me how many steps I walk and and tells me how many calories I'm burning and stuff like that. I'm drinking constant water. Even when it comes to my meals, I eat very light during the day. I, you know, drink a lot of water, eat apple slices. Sometimes I eat some cereal with some almond milk and stuff like that. But my meals are very light. The only heavy meal I have is at dinner where I have my broccoli. And it's only with healthy stuff, broccoli. I have my boneless chicken breast or I have some fish that I cook and stuff like that. And my daughter loves the meals that I cook. And I, I'm actually a chef now. I'm actually cooking. And my daughter, she's in, she enjoys the hell out of my meals and stuff like that. And it's also inspiring my brothers to eat right, my father to eat right and everything. And, and it's just, it's just... I just feel a whole lot better now and I really, really appreciate it. So if you notice, I've been putting out a lot of content lately too, you know, back to back as well, because I'm getting back into the groove of things in, in, in my life. And about, I, I will say in about three weeks, I should be at a, about around 140 something pounds about that time. Cause my doctor, Dr. Tanaka, she said she want me at 130. To me, I think that's small, but she said she would at least want me there because of my height. I'm, I'm five, four, I'm a short guy. So she wanted me to be at, be at 130, and then I have okay. I, I got the permission to go to the gym and lift weights now. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to like around like 130 ish, 135, and then I'm gonna get back to lifting. And your boy, your boy Moogie Lord gonna be ripped. He gonna be so I'm gonna be so jacked. It's not gonna it's not gonna be funny. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be super jacked. So uh, I'm looking forward to that, and I'm taking everything a, a slow slow step at a time. I'm walk every day. I walk like five miles a day. Um, five to six miles a day. My highest on weekends, I walk 7.7 .7 miles, um, over the weekend on Saturdays at night, put my headphones on. I walk down, I, I walk from my house all the way down to center city and look at the nightlife and everything and listen to my music and stuff. I listen to my anime music, my eighties rock music and stuff like that. And I just love it. I feel so much at peace now with myself. And I just want to let you guys know this. If you're going through a lot of stress, you're going through a lot of problems, always find someone you can talk to. And if you can, if you can, can afford to get professional help, get professional help. Do not, don't let this, don't let your mental state get so out of uncontrolled or unhealthy to the point where you want to harm yourself and, and just, you don't want to be motivated to do anything because of this walking and stuff like that. I'm motivated to do everything from my YouTube, um, even going down to the studio for my filming. And if you guys don't know, I also do 3d hentai. So I've been very productive with that as well money coming in and stuff like that so i learned to appreciate my body take care of my body my body was screaming for help because physically i was not healthy at all and me having those symptoms and going through those things my body was telling me that brian you need to get your shit together and that's what ended up happening and my mental state is getting a whole lot better and i just feel a whole lot happier so i just wanted to talk to you guys about that i had that on my mind i knew this is a long video this is probably almost like what 30 minutes 40 minutes probably 50 minutes long i hope you guys uh get a chance to just listen to it and and, and see if this video can help you in some way and everything because um i just feel i feel great and i thank god like i i, I don't want to die you know and this triggered me to better myself to better my life and just work things out within myself and learn how to address my anger so when i do have my little angry moments i calm myself down and i address it right there i talk to my i talk to myself in my head and I'm like all right calm down you can do it just that and the other and and i'm calm again and it's getting better and i appreciate that so that's pretty much it with this video i, I noticed it was kind of long i'm sorry about that and if you don't watch this video that's also fine as just if you guys are just wanting to know just want to keep you guys in the loop and stuff so we do have some stuff coming up my brothers and i have some stuff coming up and i'm super excited to share this stuff with you guys and it's right now it's just right now it's just not the time right now 
um, summer is wrapping up. I just got finished taking my daughter to uh, get her school supplies because uh, she starts school back up again um, for the you know September and stuff. So once that's out of the way, we got the fall coming up. Ton of ton of content, especially at the studio. You guys are gonna love it, and I hope you guys stick with me. I really appreciate it. So you guys enjoy yourself for the rest of the day. This is Mugen Lord. If you like this video and like to hear more personal things and stuff like this, have these deep conversations and serious conversations, definitely subscribe and um, hit that bell to be notified. This is Mugen Lord. Signing off. See you, Game Fiends, later. Peace out. It looks like he reached the end of the video. Well, while you're at it, check out some of my other discussion videos by clicking on the annotations below. And don't forget to follow me on other social media platforms to stay up to date with future content. Signing off.